G12 core value number 8 is I love training and equipping. And training and equipping is our happy hour. Tend to your spiritual growth and take advantage of training, equipping and mentorings. Whether it be from our network mentorings, G12 mentorings and even life class and school of leaders equipping time. We have been given the greatest opportunities to be trained and equipped for the furtherance of God's kingdom. So be compelled to level up in your faith. Elevate in your life with Christ. Be part of the training process. And release your leadership potential. Join the network mentoring with our very own Pastor Godofredo Amba. This will happen monthly from 6pm along with all our network churches. The presence of God will be so strong that my brothers and my sisters, when we go there, we are expected to work well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Another way we can be further mentored and trained is through the G12 Mentorings with Bishop Oriel Baliano of G12 Philippines. To do this, to fulfill all righteousness, to fulfill all the principle of authority, we have to align. Uh, you will prepare the way, you have to obey the authority. And of course, we are also privileged and blessed to have our monthly G12 UK Leaders Meeting and Mentoring with Pastor Cesar Castellanos of MCI Bogota, Colombia. 
I pray that God will give you an anointing for multiplication where you could experience supernatural reproduction in all that the Lord has entrusted you. To stay updated with all these Zoom mentorings, head on over to our Instagram and Facebook page and follow us for all the announcements and further details. Part of our happy hour is also the life class and School of Leaders equipping track where we witness precious souls level up in the ladder of success. As we have transitioned to the digital platform, let us remain unstoppable for Jesus. So as we go through the process of winning, consolidating, discipling and sending, we'd love for you to join the journey too. Our life class and school of leaders are every weekend where you can learn the Word of God, virtually interact with fellow students through activities, be equipped in discipleship and be developed into a leader of leaders. to let you know that a new life class batch will be coming soon so if you're interested contact your cell leader or the person that invited you we believe that the best is yet to come it is very important that we should be equipped in everything that we do especially in evangelizing to other people he commanded us and gave us authority to make disciples this is our mission now. We do this out of love. That we in the leadership, in the life class, in the equipping process, that all of us, we will let our Lord Jesus Christ to reign in our lives. Because there is a work to do. There is a job to specifically do. But my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is telling us, if you do this, when you go, preach your lives, your gospel lives, win them, baptizing them, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey the promise of God, I will be with you until the end of the ages.
Hello and blessed good evening to everyone. Welcome to Pagasa Center Evangelistic Night. And tonight we'll be talking about a faith, the faith of a woman that can be read in Luke chapter 1. And my brothers and my sisters, tonight I urge you to really concentrate. This is one of our fireplaces in Pagasa Center because this will help you grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and will strengthen you, I believe, your faith. The day is coming when we all will have to face the Lord Jesus Christ and the question is all about how did we believe? And so I urge you as Sister Gudet Gordon will be facilitating the evangelistic message that tonight something beautiful because the Holy Spirit is with us and if we are really attentive I promise you something will happen to every one of you and thank you for all of you who are joining us as first timers welcome this is Pagasa Center uh, doing this evangelistic uh, night again thank you let's now pray O oh God, our Father, we honor you, we worship you, we adore you. We declare that you are God and you alone is God and no one else. You are almighty, sovereign, that you created all things, that you own all things and sustain all things. And so God, we humble ourselves before you. We declare that we are dependent on you and we continue to ask for your mercy that you Forgive us and cleanse us from any unrighteousness that we have done, O God. Lord, thank you that tonight we are gathered. We bless your holy name, O God. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's honor the Lord by singing worship song to the Lord. Hallelujah. Today we continue to worship Him, the God who is our strength, the God who is our comfort, and we look to you, Jesus, hallelujah, God. God, I look to you. you do God I look to you you where my help comes from give me wisdom you know just what to do
Father. Hallelujah, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh God reigns with declaration and hallelujah. Welcome to our evangelistic night. I pray that tonight we will all be blessed with the word. So before I start, I want to introduce myself. My name is Sister Gadette Gordon and I am one of Pastor Shea's primary 12. And once again, I am humbled and I am honored uh, to speak to you once again. And of course, I want to thank Pastor Doc and Pastor Shea for allowing me to um share tonight's message okay so before i begin let us all pray um dear heavenly father we just want to praise you we just want to glorify you for truly oh god you are good you are wonderful you are amazing there is no one like you um lord as we uh come before you as we humble ourselves i also god that you search our hearts and then that if we have sinned against you lord i also god that you forgive us uh, Lord, I just want to thank you for today that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one who are tuned in tonight. I pray, O oh God, that your um, guidance, O oh God, be upon us, especially, Lord, as I share your word today or tonight. I pray that you will just be with us, that your guidance be upon me, especially, Lord, and that we will all be blessed, O oh God, and that we will truly your oh god um learn from your word so lord um just want to thank you for the opportunity for the opportunity and i just want to thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives oh god um just want to continue to praise you and glorify you we love you in jesus name we pray amen okay so tonight um our biblical reference is uh coming from luke chapter 1 um, from 39 to 56 Okay, so if you have your Bible or even um, your um, tablet or your phone, if you open your Bibles in Luke chapter 1, verse 39 to 56. And I uh, will be reading from the NLT. So, verse 39. So, a few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zachariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and claimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. Verse 4 to 6. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all genera generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has fulfilled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. 
for he made his promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. And verse 56, Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her, her own home. Okay, so the verses that we've read is um, about Mary and Elizabeth. Uh, again, if you read it um, from like the beginning as well of Luke chapter 1, is when this is when um, the angel Gabriel visited Mary and Elizabeth, and this is when he foretold uh, uh, you know, to Elizabeth and to Mary that they will conceive and then they will have um, babies. Okay, so here we see that, you know, um, if we know the story of it, Mary embraced what God had told her, okay? Uh, what God had told her with her heart. She, I guess at that time, she didn't understand it, but she embraced it with her whole heart. So the realm of the spirit is beyond natural and intellectual. We see here in the account um, that we've read that on verse 39 following and the, you know, the rest of the verses that the unborn Jesus and the unborn John the Baptist met like in a roundabout way. Okay, um, they met in their wombs of their mothers. So we would have to say that they were not self-conscious or aware. And yet we read that John the Baptist, prenatally in the womb, leaps, okay? He leaped in Elizabeth's belly. Now, the, the interpretation that we can take from this is that John the Baptist somehow perceived the Lord's presence. Okay, so how did, the, how did John the Baptist, in the womb of his mom Elizabeth, perceive the presence of the Lord, okay? I mean, how? Maybe the question would be better, like, where did John the Baptist perceive the presence of the Lord? Did he perceive it in his body? Well, obviously the answer there is no, because there's no physical contact at all. So was it in the realm of the mind that John the Baptist was, um, or John the Baptist made this, you know, uh, computation and leaped for joy? Well, mentally he would have been um, un underdeveloped, but uh, it must have been surely in John's spirit. Okay, he just felt the spirit of um, the Lord. And as we know, John the Baptist was a unique individual, probably the greatest prophet apart from the Lord Jesus Christ who ever lived. Of course, if we read in um, verse 15 of Luke chapter 1, it says there that he was filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. So, you know, from a very young age or maybe when he was still inside his mom he was already filled with the holy spirit now you know um children are very sensitive to many things but particularly particularly the spiritual things so even things they don't understand and for that matter can't understand they cannot grasp with all the issues involved in certain truths but we know for a fact that they can and they often do believe a quicker rate than adults do. So um, in Matthew 18 verse 3, Jesus said there, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by, by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus saw a positive trait in children, an advantage um, that children had over adults. And I wanted to say that that advantage was that they are sensitive in their spirits and everything doesn't have to qualify in their mind first and foremost. They just believe in anything. Okay, um, I've got another question. So is the spirit of a child outside the womb sensitive, but the child inside the womb is not? What do we think? Is it possible that though the unborn may not have the ability to interpret things in the outside world like young children don't either that yet there still remains a sensitivity in their spirits to the things that are going around them now there are some recent medical studies and that there is increasing tendency to believe that children in the womb are receptive uh, one way or another okay um of course i am a mom and uh with the studies how they say when mommies are you know talking to their tummies they rub it you talk or you play music i don't know everything some people think is like you're crazy like what are you doing um 
I was I wasn't uh, talking to my uh, tummy then when I was pregnant with Genesis and uh, Zeke I do but not as much as you know when Nathan was doing it so Nathan is that guy um, he would talk to my belly all the time he would rub it and he would play music and I know and I obviously felt it that every time he does that they move and say for example he plays music like the movement is like constant you know um, and then also when I go to some of the shows uh, of course he had like really loud music and all you can feel is like someone's like literally like kicking me um, on my ribs and this is why I think it was Zeke when I was pregnant um, yeah with Zeke my ribs are really sore because his foot is literally there already and you know as you know Zeke is quite a big baby so um yeah every time I go to a show I would literally feel him move he, I feel him like really kick which is like you know it's really nice to kind of know that they are responding to those things okay so it's not thing like oh people are crazy for doing that um but yeah so those are the studies that you know when you rub their bellies their tummies you know and their knows what else we're doing to our tummies then you know uh i believe that even the unborn have a, a, a spiritual receptor that can pick up things so they do understand they pick up things of course we can't really say or you know tell that that doesn't happen outside the womb with a little six month or nine month year old or a, a one year old baby um that they don't understand what's going on but of course they do pick it up they can see it in our faces and also like you know the unborn don't they pick up something i think it's a given that we need to pray for our children um and also the unborn one unborn children okay we just need to pray from the moment of conception because it's likely that from that moment we have a spirit a receptor that reacts to things going on that it doesn't understand but in the environment it may be uh it may even explain certain problems that people struggle with uh throughout their lives and don't understand why because they don't have the knowledge of it but it certainly would go a long way to illustrate that spiritual realm is a whole different area than mere physical, intellectual and emotional. And, you know, let's not restrict ourselves to the mind or to the emotions when we're seeking after God. Okay, we have to be open to the spiritual realm. Now, the other thing that happened to Elizabeth, okay, not John the Baptist, but to Elizabeth in verse 4 to 1 that, when it went if you read when we read it, it it says there that she was filled with the holy spirit okay um there is an experience in uh, christian life when we are born again we receive the holy spirit as the gift from god or the, as the gift of god he resides in our human spirit but he wants to get out he wants to invade into the area of the soul to control our mind our emotions and our actions and he even wants to fill our body as the temple okay very simply put it happens by surrendering all those areas to him and then he floods the whole being it can be quite dramatic and it can be quite a non-event in a sensual sense but it's certainly something that happens by faith as we surrender and then it must be correct it must be maintained the fullness of the spirit it's a constant life condition of surrender to the Lordship of Jesus and asking the Holy Spirit to be in control. And there are also, you know, other times in the New Testament that we find people being filled with the Holy Spirit for a specific, special purpose. But we're not going to obviously um, go into that. So going back to um, Luke chapter 1. Um, so the same thing happened in verse 4 to 1 with it as a bit if we look at it it says there that she was filled with the holy spirit and then when and then we read in verse 42 then she spoke out with a loud voice and said blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb so incidentally we know that we'll come to it later on if you do read all the way down to verse 67 the same thing happened uh, to Zacharias her husband it says there that now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying so this was a special filling for something actually that was going to be spoken by Elizabeth 
we might call it prophetic blessing upon Mary. Now, if we look here in, in verse 42, it says there that, Then he spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Okay, so she was speaking to Mary. So now we look at Mary, okay? She was the most blessed woman ever to bear the Christ. It was the dream of every Jewess to be the divinely chosen vessel, vessel to carry the Messiah and to deliver the Messiah into the world. So Mary was chosen of God for this purpose and not only she was chosen but I would go as far as to say that she was a choice vessel. Okay, she was a unique among women. Okay, she was blessed above all women. But what does the scripture actually declare of her? It says that she was special and chosen, but nevertheless, she was an ordinary woman who needed to exercise her faith in God. Okay, so now Elizabeth's declaration over Mary tells us several things. Of course, the first thing um, it confirms to us that Mary's respond to the angel. Okay, remember um, I said in the beginning that um, Mary, um, you know, embraced what God has told her with all her heart. She may not understand it, but she accepted it. She, um, she embraced it with all her heart. So if we uh, go back further back from the beginning, so the story is, you know, Gabriel had come to Zachar Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist, and told him that his wife Elizabeth, um, who was barren and old, older, and beyond the years of bearing children, was going to bear a son. And he wouldn't believe. He heard, but he wouldn't believe. And he was struck dumb because of this. Okay? So the same angel came to Mary and told her a more difficult thing, that God is what God is going to do. Because she didn't even know a man, it wasn't that she was barren, it was that she was a virgin, so she's not even married. She didn't understand. There's a realm of the spirit again. She did not understand. Like Zacharias didn't understand, but she embraced with her heart what she did not understand. Elizabeth was inspired by the Holy Spirit here, filled and she um, tells her that she made the right call, okay? She put faith and belief in what God said in his word, for nothing shall be impossible with God. Whereas Zacharias, her husband, expressed unbelief. Yeah, Mary was really blessed, okay? So now if we look again in verse 45, blessed is she who believed. And then Elizabeth says, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Listen, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. And we all believe this and we always say this. We always hear this, that without faith, it is impossible to please God. We, we may see things that we try to understand. Okay. I'm not saying that we don't do that. I know sometimes when we are faced with trials or... Um, challenges in life we try to understand why are we facing this or why is this happening to me okay i'm not saying that um we don't we can't say that and you know that's part of who we're made to be okay we need to have a measure of understanding but if we are trying to understand it all we will never get it we'll never get there okay so if we're trying to feel good about it all we will never get there Again, blessed is the one who believes, right? This obviously um, something that we have to always practice, that we always have to remind ourselves that whatever we may be facing, um, trials or challenges, or even like say there's sickness or there's things that seems impossible, okay? Um, if we truly believe and believe that, you know, nothing is impossible, then of course, God will be pleased and we will be blessed, as it says there. Blessed are those who believe. Okay, so um, going back to Mary. So now that Mary is moved by God, by the same Holy Spirit, 
and of course she um i guess in a way she was glad um with the news that she heard and you know this is something that i we sing uh that there's a song uh it says uh, verse 46 my soul magnifies the lord okay um and my spirit has rejoiced in god my savior so again um there's the same kind of story that uh, resembles with mary's um you know story and it's hannah obviously we're not gonna talk about hannah today that um, it's about Hannah's prayer in 1st Samuel so if you have the time you can actually read her story as well she also was another mother of a miraculous baby okay so again Mary she was a woman steeped in God's Word God's Word was on her heart and Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks because of this godly teenager okay this teenage girl was so steeped in the scripture so whenever the holy ghost came on her all that came out of her was the word of god and if we look at her praise it was expressed from the heart of a sinner concerning her need of a savior and the one whom she knew was her savior the living god and that's vital okay so her praise expressed herself as a sinful woman Again, it says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my Savior. We, um, obviously, as we read through this prayer of praise, we will find other references to her need for mercy and being elevated and being lowly. So, you know, the, the scripture presents Mary as special, but as a sinner like the rest of us who need a Savior. She declares here, she declares here and in fact even after the birth of jesus later on she goes to the temple and brings a uh, sin offering for cleansing because she was a sinner that needed cleansing after the birth of jesus okay so the bible is very clear that we are all sinners every one of us even someone as good and godly as mary was a sinner who needed a savior so paul expands on this in romans 3 22 Okay, and it says therefore there is no different there is no difference uh, he concludes everyone whether they be Jew or Gentile religious or religious he concludes them all under sin there is no difference so for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God so this means is that we have missed the mark okay it's like playing darts and we miss the board and sometimes you know <laughs> we miss the wall it's me um, before you know um god we have completely missed the mark we are falling short of the standard we don't even hit the board um because of that paul goes on to say that we can be justified freely by god's gift in other words because we are bankrupt morally we cannot earn our own salvation we can't go to god or to heaven by doing good because no matter how much good we do most of it, if not all of it, is tainted with sin. And our bad always outweighs it. So, you know, we need a free gift. And what is this gift? Something um, gracious, something that comes from God. Not because we are worthy or we have um, earned it, but because He gives it. He is giving it. And that is when Paul says, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now that's how we can be brought back from um, the, slaver, the slavery of our sin, whom God set forth. So um, let us remember that Jesus is the covering that covers our sin, okay? That allows us to come to God. In other words, what we could not do, Jesus has done it on the cross. A lot of men in this world will give everything. If they're millionaires, they would give all their millions just to know that their sins were gone. And yet they don't have to because Jesus gave his precious and priceless blood, okay? That all of us, all sinners, <clears throat> and that there is only one savior and one way to God. Paul said to T Timothy, there is one God and one mediator. That means one go-between, between God and man. 
the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ran ransom for all, to be testified in due time. Of course, Mary is not the Savior. Mary is not the mediator. For that matter, neither is any saint, however godly they may be. No church bring us to God, whether it be a Protestant church, a Roman Catholic church. The Mormons or the Jehovah Witnesses would tell you, oh, you have to be part of us for you to get to God. No, they don't give a guarantee by that way that you'll get there. Okay, so there is no one, no priest, no pastor that can bring us to God. Only Christ and Christ alone through his cross through his resurrection and through his embracing him by faith and repentance. That's the only way that we can come to God. So in verse 4 to 8, before I finish, it says there, God has, Mary said, God has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth, all generation will call me blessed. Sadly, many generations have remembered Mary inaccurately, but the scripture records her as a woman who, though good and godly, knew she was a sinner in and in need of a savior. Now, can we ask this question? What will history record of us? So like Mary, a woman of saving faith, a sinner who knew the, the, their need of a savior and didn't spend their life exhausting themselves intellectually to answer every question in the book or crippled themselves emotionally trying to work through these issues, but came to Jesus as they were, weary, worn, and sad, and found in him a resting place. So before I end, let me ask you this question. If you're someone who has been affected by inner hurt, you know, we have to ask Jesus not only to save you, ask him to heal you, to heal your spirit, heal your soul jesus can heal the body as well okay we need to ask him to heal those things as a consequence of our sin and pain and to touch our spirit some people have a wounded spirit there has been violence done to their human spirit even christians and they cannot get through to god because the holy spirit is hindered because of the pain and hurt in their human spirit he wants to use our human spirit as a channel to bless you and to bless others but it's hurt it needs healing it needs restoring so i ask you to come to him okay it says come to him all you who are burdened and he said and i will give you rest so you know that's what this world is crying out for they cry out for mental rest emotional rest physical rest spiritual rest and they will go everywhere just to find it they will go and get you know help they will go to therapy some will probably get um medication for it some people will go to gurus and some will probably sell their soul to the devil and even christians but brothers and my sisters you know there is only one answer to this there's only one solution and this is jesus christ okay he has it all so, you know, like Mary, she didn't know what was coming, okay? God spoke to her and told her, this is happening to you. She did not understand, but she embraced it with her whole heart. She was full of faith, okay? And that pleased God. And now if we truly believe and if we truly have faith, that no matter what we're facing right now, whatever trials or whatever challenges, whatever mountains, whatever sickness that we are facing right now, if we believe that God can help us, God can heal us, then nothing is impossible. So if you are this person, I want you to pray with me and I want you to um, say this fully from your heart. So before I end, I just wanna ask, if you are this person, if you are in need of rest, whether it be mental rest, emotional rest, physical rest, spiritual rest, it's not too late. You can still turn to God. You can still come back. You can ask him for these rest, for peace. You know, I always um, 
share this or I say this to the people that I'm trying to reach out that, you know, we haven't got nothing to lose if we try God, isn't it? So, you know, if you have tried everything else, if you are this person who tried every single thing, you know, um, for you to be able to, uh, to get this rest that you wanted, why don't you try God? Why don't you try Him? Allow Him to work in your life. Allow Him to move in your life and see what He can do to you, okay? So if you are this person and if God has spoken to you, whatever your circumstances, circumstances in life, whatever you are facing, will you come to Him now? And this is your chance, okay? So I'm gonna um, uh, lead this prayer. And if you are this person, I want you to repeat this prayer, repeat after me. And then after afterwards, I will pray for you, okay? So if we close our eyes and um, bow our head. Dear Lord, I admit that I am a sinner. I have done many things that don't please you. I have lived my life for myself only. I am sorry and I repent. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe that you died on the cross for me to save me. You did what I could not do for myself. I come to you now and ask you to take control of my life. I give it to you from this day forward. Help me live every day for you and in a way that pleases you. Lord, I love you and I thank you and that I will spend all eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so if you are that person who uttered that prayer, congratulations because your name is now in the book of life. So if this is your first time tuning in or you've been invited by someone from our church, Pagasa, please make sure that you connect. Don't just turn off your phone and, you know, go. Uh, make sure that you message them afterwards or, you know, whenever you want to, but make sure you do it straight away. Connect because they will, you know, um, continue and guide you through the process properly. Because just in case, you know, you're just like, oh, what did I just do? What did I just pray? Um, so yeah, so make sure that you connect. And I pray that, you know, this, this message has touch your heart or somehow um you understood some of it um but yes again i just want to thank you for listening and i hope you are all blessed thank you good night i love you i'll see you all